Hey, welcome everybody to Gardens, the Untold Story. Andy Lopez, I love you, brother, the Invisible Gardener. I love sitting you too, in the, Sitting in this beautiful, Look. you know, trees in the background with the sun coming up through them. And we're talking ants today. Now, yeah. I don't know that much about ants, my friend. So I'm just going to let you jump right into it, Andy. Okay, go ahead, go ahead and do the screen sharing thing, me Digger, that we talked about. There you go. There we go. So... I, I, I wrote God Ants because, you know, the whole thing you got. What was the name of the commercial you got? What was it? Got something? Got milk? Oh, yeah, got something milk. like that, yeah. Got milk. So I got I got this thing that says God Ants. So here's, here's the, oh, I feel antsy. <laughs> Hi, Victor. How are you doing, man? <laughs> I got, by the way, I started. When I started to do Invisible Garden, the very first, this was 1971, the very okay. first person that called me had an ant problem. That's the very first, that's how I got into ants. So, and I can tell you real fast what happened there. The lady says, I have ants all over the house, everywhere. They're coming everywhere. The ants were, were falling onto the roof and coming down from the roof. Mm -hmm. So you had two trees on either side of the house. One tree was next to a bib, which was leaking all the time, and the other tree was not. One tree was healthy, and one tree was not. Which do you think was healthy? Uh, now, you said beside a bib or something? There, yeah, a bib is where you hook up uh, water to a hose. Okay, okay, a hose bib. Hose bib okay, right? yeah. So, and the hose bib was leaking, there's and two, that would have been... There's two trees, one on either side yep. of the house. Right. One tree was next to the bib, which was leaking all the time, and one tree was not. Guess which tree was healthy? The one that wasn't. Exactly right. So I I said, I said, lady, your 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 ants are falling from your roof. They're coming down to the house. You can't find them. Anticipation is killing me. Oh, hey, Marty. <laughs> I see them marching from their nest across the drive and try along. I think they're gone. <laughs> if you said, if you, I think the, you look and see, I think they're gone. And I, I since it was my first one, I, I, I thought to myself, hmm, why are, is this tree suffering from ants? Because that's what happens, you know, when a tree gets stressed out, ants go there. When you ever see right. ants climbing up the tree, you know something's going on. You know the ants are going, wow, time for food, right? And so the other one was not. And so I said to myself, hey, hi, John. I said to myself, what's the difference? Oh, this one's getting watered all the time. The, the, there was no biology anywhere around that tree. You would think that the root system would go further out, but the tree was, I tell I told the lady that the tree has, uh, her socks were wet all the time. It was not a good idea. And so that's how I got started in ants. That was my first, first job. And I basically told her, okay, first of all, you got to fix the bib. You got to stop that from leaking like that. Secondly, since you don't use any chemicals or anything, your property should be, it looks like it's in good shape, except for where it was constantly leaking all the time. So yeah. that was my little little lecture that I gave to her. And I said the best way, and even then I, I told her this, I wasn't really key. I hadn't been keyed into the biology of the soil, what was going on, but I knew something was yeah. going on in the soil that was due to the water. So I, mm -hmm. so what I did was I brought some compost and I, I, inadvertently I've always been using compost, right? I've always been using compost. I was already, good day all, good day all. I was already on that on that level of knowing that some reason you got to use compost. I didn't yeah. even relate to it to the biology of the compost. I just said I need to use compost around the tree. And within a few months of the water stopping to the leak. The ants stopped climbing up the tree because the tree wasn't really, really super sick. The sick, the tree was just tired of getting wet all the time, and the yeah. and the root system was not working because it was really like very muddy under there. And then on yeah. top of that, she uses a used to water, so it was water there all the time. Anyway, here's a here are the ten tips for natural ant control. Okay, here's tip one. Okay, and if you have any questions, um, feel free to to. Uh, Stick them in the chat. chat. Yeah. yeah. Put it in the chat, but I, I can't see it because I had to slide over it. But uh, I know that uh, K 
Ken here will um, pop it up. But so what I learned throughout, oh, hey, God, Juana Natural Pharma. Wow, that is so cool, man. So I learned from experience that the soil biology controls all insects, because all the insects start in the soil. Mm -hmm. See, they don't start up in the tree or in, they start in the soil. They, they're born in there. They're at the, so it's so the, and I'm using your phrase, soil biology, but I would say microbes control all the insects and, and it regulates what in, any insects that live in the soil. So whenever you have an infestation of any one thing like the ants, you know, there's a problem with the soil, right? So the long, I teach long-term and short-term solutions. So the long-term solution, keep your soil alive. It's a, it's an ongoing process that you have to do. Mm -hmm. And it takes us. And I was lucky in the sense that the lady uh, only had this, uh, the, only had her ant problem because the tree was right there. And the ant, it, it's nothing wrong with having ants. The lady says, "I want you to get rid of all the ants." I says, "No." If you get rid of all the ants, you're going to have major problems because ants are very important. So I'm going to go out to well, I'm going to let, let me actually scroll back up here because uh, this is one of the reasons that they are important. My grandmother said they eat termite larvae and to leave them be, lived at my house for 20 years and never poisoned them. That's absolutely right. They're natural enemies, natural enemies. And early on in my youth, I learned how to differentiate, differentiate between ants and termites and and if i wish i had known that known this because i had a look really cool picture i could have i can look for it but basically you can tell by their wings mm -hmm. <clears throat> most people don't know whether they have ants or, or termites because they tend to look alike they swarm there's a whole bunches of them <laughs> you know yeah but if you were to look at the structure of the wings I mean, you know how ants how, how the ant wings are they have the wing shape and they have a vine uh, a vein up the middle, right? <coughs> <coughs> well, the structure of the the shape of the wings and the shape of, of for termites and the shape of the wings for ants are slightly different in that the the vein doesn't run up the middle. The termite veins runs off on one side and goes like this, whereas the uh, ant uh, veins go up the middle, and that's one way to tell. And and there and I've always been tell I've always told people if you don't know the difference between termites and ants, and you go around killing everything, you're going to have more termites because the termites are also soil, soil control. There's actually uh, two different types of termite: dry wood termite, and I forgot the other one, which is basically uh, they're they're in the soil. They they mm -hmm. if you're sitting on the soil and you have a major problem. Uh, with the biology, the, the the type of termites will go into the soil and attack your 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 house, whereas the other types they're in the soil but they will fly and and they they're not they don't live in the soil. What so there there's uh, ants that live in the termites that live in the soil and termites that live in the house in the wood. See right. right. So the, the termites have evolved a little bit to say, well, we're not going to deal with the soil anymore. We're going to go right into the house, but they still are start in the soil. I don't know if you've ever seen them swarm when they turn my swarm or ant swarm. There's a little hole with millions of ants or whatever is flying flying out, right? They also start in the soil. But the, I think the the termite the uh, the dry wood termites have evolved to go after the wood, whereas uh, they're flying. They li they will literally live in the wood, whereas the uh, the subterranean oh that's it the subterranean termites uh, live in the soil. Mm -hmm. slightly slightly different and so the the long-term solution is definitely of soil biology because again it goes right back to the soil biology because if you don't if these are indicators that there's something wrong and that's why whenever you have an infestation of anything whether it be termites beetles or you, you name it you know grasshoppers they all ha are all telling you the soil has had it <laughs> it's not functioning yeah. It's not, it's not function. And when they, in the process of killing things, you kill everything. You don't, you don't have that DDT, whatever it is you're using around. It doesn't say, are you a good guys or bad guys? No, it destroys everything. Mm -hmm. And you know what I, I, I tell people, uh, I've been, this is one of my favorite things to tell people is, do you know what happens if you get rid of all ants on your property? 
I don't know. You probably everything kind of grinds to a halt because you're missing a food source for some of the biology. More ants will move in. <laughs> okay. Right, and and I've learned one of my book is, books is called Dances with Ants, mm -hmm. which, by the way, I I, I just so in my book Don't Panic, It's Organic. I put the whole book Dances with Ants into that book, so it's a free book on how to control how to control ants cool. inside. The Don't Panic, It's Organic book. So if you guys want to, you can go to my website says, you know, and look at the store. It'll say Don't Panic, It's Organic. It takes you to Amazon. Buy the book. It'll say free inside Dances with Ants because there's a whole – and it's a radically different approach. Don't kill them. Make them – you work with them. You make them your armies. And there are lots of ways you can talk to the ants. And the, See, the ants have people trained. That's why I tell people. Ants have you trained. And if and 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 if you learn how to work with them, uh, Michelle says I talk to the queen. That's what I tend to do. I say I would like to talk to your queen, please. And the <laughs> ants will say, No, we're not talking to you. You guys are you humans are really really bad, and we're not going to deal with this. But it, it, and there are different ways you get their attention. Let me go on to tip two. I got plenty okay. of time here anyway. Here's tip two. So, soil biology are not supposed to live in water environment. They're not. It's not a water, it's not an ocean biology, it's soil biology. And, and whenever, and, and that tells me a lot, a lot because people over water, city water kills the, bi the biology. I don't know if you, I, I told you guys that before, but it destroys the biology. Therefore, you're going to have, therefore, you're going to have all kinds of problems. And ants are mm -hmm. number one indicator, but you can have all kinds of other problems. Poor trees can't get up and go. They're stuck there, right? They're stuck there. So when, yeah. Uh, I, I, many times people call me, I have this problem with this tree. And I'm and, and they say, why are you looking down at the soil? I said, well, you really have a soil problem, so I want to see what's going on here. And no, you do not have any soil. There's a big difference between having soil and not having soil. But they water like crazy, water, water. Now, especially when it's super hot, you water all the time. One of the things I, I, I do when I, take, I have a, a new customer, give me the keys to the, to the timer. Give me the keys to the timer. You know, you're, so the, the gardeners will just, oh, it's super hot. Let's water more, water more. And and, and uh, there are lots of other diseases and stuff that come about because the soil biology, see what happens if you water too much, you do all this stuff, you have a different biology going on down there than the one you really want. Yeah, you don't want the aerobic biology that can survive in that water. Right. You want more fungally dominant biology that, needs oxygen in the soil with too much water you don't have that and i knew i knew that from internally i knew this is different this is this is not the this is not cool <laughs> and that's why the the trees because they can't do anything about it are not getting the nutrition they need and therefore they're going to have the bug and the disease mm -hmm. right so i wrote down microbes in all forms of soil but only require moisture and do not survive underwater the I mean, yeah. I saw a micro once with a face mask and a little tank, but that was a different story, right? Yeah. yeah. And, I, of course, one of the ways to deal with the ants is to get yourself a whole property water filter. And they're not really super expensive. They're very, very inexpensive to get. And uh, when I do my uh, – I'll give I'll give you the, the – uh, the, let's see uh, – what you can do is when we get off, uh, I'll give you under your description. You can put the name of the company down. Sure. Uh, because they, they, most of the time you got to spend ten thousand dollars for a whole property water filtration system, which is just bull BS. This guy, this company is nineteen hundred dollars, maybe two thousand and something around there. It depends on the type of filter you get. Mm -hmm. And actually, you can do the whole property. So I have a new customer. He says, "I already have a water filter for the house, uh, but." Can I use it for the garden? He's the only, and this, this company says, wait a minute, you're buying a water filter for the garden and you're not putting it in your house? I've never heard of anybody buying a water filter for the garden. Mm -hmm. And this is a water filtration company. And they're like, what the heck? What are you doing? What is it? You Water filter for the, who's going to drink the water? And, and they were joking and everything. And I'm telling, and I was trying to explain to them, you can't get it past them. And I'm trying to become an affiliate at the moment, but I'm not going to worry about it. My goal is to help you guys. So, and you know, the city world does major damage. If you have any, if you have an ant infestation, or like you know, when you're when you, if you guys are growing pot, I hope you filter out the water because the city water will kill the bi biology. Yeah. 
containers or whether they're in the ground. And pot is a weed, so it can handle more of a, of a has more uh, understanding of, of, it can grow on almost anything. I think you can water, water the soil and the biology still work to some degree, but it does. It, it doesn't. Go, I know a lot of pot growers who say, we have white flies, we got this, we got that. That's the problem. And they're not connecting it. They're not thinking, gee, this, maybe I should get a filtration system. So that's one of the, uh, the tips. That's probably one of the most important tips there uh, in terms of, you know, you want to solve your problem. Let me do, and you see the little sprinkler I put on there, right? <laughs> yep. Now you're uh, sweeping. Did you say something? <laughs> oh, that no, a, that's my puppy dogs. They're that's talking. Your puppy, that's your puppy dog. I have a cat coming. That's why. So uh, I, I like telling people no. the answer like Mother Nature's janitors. It's their job to clean up and recycle. So it's not it's not like you have evil ants or bad ants. They're doing their job. And, uh, and all insects are that. All insects, that's what they do. That's their job. Is to mm -hmm. clean up the sick and, and recycle everything, and so it, it's important to, um, I, I can say, control your watering. Ideally, you you want to water just enough to have a, a, enough fluid flow through there so the plants get the nutrition they need water, to, you know, but not so much so they they drown in it. You actually want it to be alive. You actually don't water if it's still wet. A lot of times in container plants, people are watering all the time. And sure enough, they can yeah. have all, they're sitting in water. Literally, plants are sitting in water and they have all kinds of problems. And then, and you would think logically, you don't need to know anything. Gee, maybe if I'm watering too much, I should, the plants responding to that. See, because their root systems start to die. But before that, they get attacked by, ants move into that container and attack the plant. I have one lady, she water, it says, every time I water, ants come moving out. I said, well, you, you have a problem. Yeah, you need to repot your soil, repot the container, and this time pay attention to the health of the soil. But people don't, don't realize that in a container, you have to control the soil even more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even even more because the, the root systems are not going anywhere. They're getting the city water all the time. I don't know if you ever – have you ever repotted a container and a, a, a plant in a container? Well, Yeah. Just a couple you, of here and there when I was did, growing cannabis, yeah. Did you uh, did you have you seen the uh, uh, the insides of the container how they look like when you take the plant out? Okay, it's white. Like, yeah, yeah. And that's the sauce of the soil, the salt. Yeah. And and on top of that, the root systems are normally meant to be going out further than our containers. They're like root bound and wrapped around. So it, it's a really it, it goes right back down to you're making it really ten times worse. By not paying attention, you should repot your container on a regular basis, maybe once a year, put new organic uh, potting soil in there. Uh, I tell people, I was just yesterday talking to a lady who says, well, what's wrong with my plant? I said, well, first of all, you're overwatering. I, I asked her, so when you water, does it run straight out from the bottom? She says, yes. Well, there's no soil there. And so that's, a, that's, a, that's very important. But in the ground... People don't understand that a lot of times, like here in California, it sits in water. It's like a container in water. Water is not draining out. Mm -hmm. So I used to post hole digger. I go down, and you can see water there. Go see the water because <laughs> clay soil gets hard. It just sits in water, and then the plants are sitting in water. Your trees are sitting in water. Yeah, you see, and that's you. You know, you don't have the right kind of biology. And then when they start talking German, hey, what's all that? It was like, what the heck, right? Sieg heil. <laughs> yeah, that's not, is that German? I think okay. so, yeah. So let's go out. We're, this is tip number three is control your watering. Right? Yeah. Okay, so for tip four, th there's things you can do in the house because, there, as I said before, there are really two ways you can t communicate with the ants. Unless you're like a Buddhist monk, you sit down and you start meditating with them and you talk to their spirits and you – Community, my brothers and sisters, how, how are you doing? Could you please stay out of our monastery? Otherwise, it's free. Rome will feed you. Uh, but there's two ways you you communicate with ants. One is you feed them, or two, you start you get their attention by start killing their their soldiers. Right. So yeah. either way, the, the information gets back to the colony. Your Majesty, somebody's feeding us, or somebody's killing us. Right. They mm -hmm. they got the they got the attention. And so it, the feeding process is actually what I started to do. I said, okay, so they're after, they're after food. 
right? So I tell I tell people, uh, keep your house clean. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's what you do. You you I, I understand that they're all living things. These are living things so like me, little living beings. And so you have to respect them and you have to say, look, I understand your job is doing it. And there's something I'm doing wrong because you're not doing anything wrong. You're just responding to the mess I'm making of the place here. Yeah. So if the soil was happy and alive and everything's functioning, the answer will be there. But they won't they won't bother you at all. They won't they won't come in the house because they have plenty of food outside. You know, and, and inside the house, in certain ways, you can tell them, stay out of the house. I would, and, it, and if you're like me or like this other, the last person that actually can learn how to communicate with the ants, could you please go over there? And you don't even need to use any chemicals at all. One of the things I learned from experience that you can, you can get your attention in the house, well, is to keep the house clean. <laughs> if you have food everywhere on the floor, sugar here and food everywhere, they're going to be coming in to get the food. It's as simple as that. You know, basically, it really is. They will find the food. And they figure out many ways to come in your house, and they'll go after the food. And you can just say, thank you for cleaning up for me. Take it. Take all the food you want to go. Right? So if you don't want them to come in, I've learned, for, for example, there are many uh, safe, clean sprays that you could use in the house. And, and they're not toxic, but by sprays, meaning something that will uh, – see, ants – uh, they have a trail. They leave a marker, a thermal marker, wherever they go. This way to the food, that way to the food. So one ant, and by the way, ants are female-run organizations, so they all communicate very well. And the males, all they do is have sex once a year. Hey, George, did you get it? You know, and they die if they don't bait. But the ones that do mate, they go off and start another colony. So the fact that they communicate everything to each other is to our benefit, because if if, a, if, if, if an ant says, oh, your majesty, I found a great source of food in this house. Let's go get it. The, all, the, all the ants will go over there and make big trails, and they'll go look for everything, and, they, and, and they'll go get it. They don't, they don't see you as living there. They see you as another food source. Really simple. This is another great food source. Oh, look at this. Sugar here. Oh, look at that. And that's and they take us for them because that's the way it works outside. There was no reason. They don't see this house. They don't see a building. They don't see this territory. So the way you tell them that you want to be out there, if they don't listen to you, because a lot of times the ants will not listen to you. And a lot of times you don't know how, how, how to get to the right. Let me see what she said. My friend has horses and found mice in the tax shed. He told them that they were not to live inside the shed. There was another one that they could use. Crazy sound they said. Left, right. And, and that's exactly it. You, people need to understand that we're all one consciousness. We just have to learn to talk to the other part. And if mm -hmm. you respect it, that's why I call it Dances with Ants. I don't I don't want to title the book, How to Kill All Ants, because <laughs> that is not the, the point. So Dances with Ants, when I saw Dances with Wolf, I said, shit, Dances with Ants. That is a cool statement, because that's what you're doing. You yeah. you, you do something, and they do something back. You know, they... And, and communication is in many, many different ways. Uh, I, what I tell people, clean up the inside of the house, see how the ants are coming in, plug that up. So if there's a little hole, plug the hole up. Uh, if they're coming in through all, whatever systems they're using to come in, stop that, clean it. And on the outside, you can start to feed them. I call it a little ant cafes. So what I do, did was I made, I got a finch birdhouse, put a cup of, inside of there, put some honey, add some water, put it in the right place, the ants will go in there. And I had them all around the property, and they would, I would change the food regularly. They, that was, that was, they would go there and get their food, go there and get their food. Whereas in the house, I would I would learn to tell them not to go in there lots of different ways. Me, I can talk to them, but other people can't. So I say, okay, so you can't talk to them. not your fault. You got you have to change your consciousness. Here's something you, that you can directly communicate with them. So you can learn. To, there are lots of really cool natural sprays that you can use. Let me see if I did this the next one here. So... I started with Dr. Bronner's soaps. Uh, have you ever heard okay. of Dr. Bronner's soaps? Yep. Right. There's a natural Castile soap, almond, peppermint, lavender. They're really cool. You can use it to bathe with. I would not. I used the uh, lavender to brush my teeth with once. I was not such a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> bubbles. I have bubbles in my mouth. Well, I had I had lavender breath for a long time. My girlfriend would go, I would kiss you, but you still, you smell like lavender. I ain't, I'm not gonna touch that. <laughs> Peppermint's good, but lavender's a little bit. So Dr. Bruno soap, 
They make a variety of soap. They're clean. You just have to learn how much to use. Don't do like that lady did. Use it straight. I don't know how. She put it on the rag and wiped it. But all you have to do is add a little bit to a quart of water and spray. And what it does is it, it hides their, their trail. It, it, it cancels their trails. That I wonder they if leave. that would work for mice, too. I, I yeah, right. It works for all, any creature that uses a scent uh, to smell. They they won't they they it gets confusing. It works really well. Uh, that to brown soap works really great on on keeping uh, uh, deer from eating your roses or uh, and your garden. So I don't use it on my vegetables. I basically spray around the garden. So they have to go through the garden to get to. Same thing with rabbits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would spray around the garden, and they have to go through that lavender smell or the peppermint smell, the eucalyptus smell. And you can make your own herbal sprays. I've learned how to. You know, we have a well, you have lavender plants. You can make a tea out of lavender and spray it. Uh, yeah. You can spray. You know that uh, that uh, lettuce is toxic to a lot of insects. You can boil some lettuce in water and spray it. And there are lots of the citronella, lots of herbs, uh, oregano. You can make a spray out, out of any of those things and spray in the house and spray around the outside of the house. Because normally you spray in the house, you drive the ants out. Well, first you figure out how they're coming in. And if you can't talk to them, they keep them. We're not listening to you, so fine, I'll get your attention. You you find out how they're coming in, then you spray inside the house to dry them out, then you plug out the entrance, then you spray around the outside of the house. And one of the things I like about that you you really need to do is you need to uh, change the smell because those they say, oh, we're used to lavender. That's lavender. We're not gonna so I'll use a peppermint. That's one thing I like about Dr. Bronner's because they have a variety of different sources. Vinegar is really very good. Just a little bit of vinegar and water spread. Ants won't like that either, and so you you have to learn how to how to make your own. You could literally make your own if you have a garden. Garlic, yeah. <laughs> garlic is great. Garlic is one of my favorite tools that I use. I have a question for you, Andy. How I often would you think you would change the the odor or the scent that you're using? Like how long do you figure it lasts? A week, ten days? Every week. Every week. Every week. Right. Okay. Yeah, and the, another way to tell is that if you spray it and the ants go, <laughs> and they keep on going, well, I guess I better change. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. right? Smart, so, right on through, yeah. Right, and you get to learn how to 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 find different things that you can use. What I do a lot of times, I walk through a health food store, and I go, oh, look at this. They have um, all kinds of really interesting things that you can use to spray. Like garlic is one of my favorite ones to use. And I didn't put it on here because it was – Mint, right? Mint. It's it, it works on all these creatures because they their sense of smell is very different than ours. And, and if you can smell it, they can smell it ten thousand times stronger. And yeah, and they they will go. I don't know what this is, so I'm not going to fool around with it. I am not going to right. And so uh, one of the things there's there's two things, and I probably should have put it on here because I have so there's so many different things. And this is so this will even be included in the tips, but garlic. It's really, really one of the most powerful tools you can use, but most people won't be spraying garlic inside their house, right? Yeah. yeah. That'll be a little bit. That's a little bit. To, so this is for outside. And the garlic yeah. will control ants, spiders, all kinds of creatures, including deer, rabbits, all kinds of things like that. You just have to learn. How, you can make your own or you can buy it. Uh, what's called garlic barrier. It has a, a thousand bulbs of garlic in a gallon. You go, oh, boy, it's real strong. Uh, yeah, it, man. don't dump that on the bus on the way home. No, no. Man. So <laughs> one of the things when I started talking about garlic, and then, and then I, I then I started. I mentioned I mentioned that I also have a book called How How to um, Control Mosquitoes. Yeah. And the way and this this is a separate subject. I don't think I have a I don't think I have it here for, uh, for mosquito control. No, but. This is really, really cool on how to control mosquitoes. Basically, you take a garlic clove, cut it in half, put one in each piece of your shoes, and work, and walk around with it. Mm -hmm. Your friends will come up and go, man, you smell garlic -y. When I was in high school, uh, my favorite thing to do was to make garlic sandwiches. I would get open garlic, get about t four or five, six cloves of garlic, crush it, and eat it. And I would go up to people, hi, and they would go, okay. You're cruel right. and unusual, Andy, okay? Right, right. And, and, and the ladies will go up to me, yep, it's garlic, <laughs> you know? And, and then <laughs> and I, the Italians I, would come running. And, and then my mother told me, she says, um, you know, if you if you don't want bugs to bite you, take a clove, cut it in half, and put it in your shoes. I go, okay. And I, I would do that all the time. 
And so mosquitoes, the way mosquitoes find you is they they smell you. They sense they 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 smell you, right? They, by the way, if you're a meat eater, they'll smell you more than if you're a vegetarian because they, they smell the, the the carbon whatever it is that you, you give off when you when you eat meat. But if you put that uh, a cloak cut in half, put it in your shoes, you can walk through. So when we used to go camping, you used to get bit by all kinds of stuff. They won't touch you. As a matter of fact, mountain lion will go up and go, uh, okay, yeah, right, go away. <laughs> a snake won't bite you. All kinds of garlic is, so garlic is an important tool to use, but you don't use it in the house. The other one that's a really, really super important, these are two things that if you learn how to use these, you don't need to worry about anything else, at least outside. Inside, you don't want to be smelling like garlic. Literally, you don't want to do that. Trust me, I tried it once, and it never, oh, there's, your face went away. Oh God! It's I can't talk right. to myself. What? It's all right. I was just reaching, so I would have been, you know, yeah, going yeah, to the camera yeah, and yeah, freaking yeah, people yeah. out. So the other tool that you can use is coffee. No coffee. Okay. Right. So now, is that before or after I drink it? <laughs> well, see that, that that here's the thing. See, I I used to teach people. I used to tell people, okay, so you can use uh, make a second batch of coffee for. For the plants, make make a batch of coffee for you, and then run it through the system. Make another batch, and you can spray your plants with that. Uh, you can you you can you, coffee cream and sugar is an excellent food for plants. By the way, coffee cream and sugar is excellent to give to the plants. Organic coffee, of course. But then uh, early on, I discovered uh, cold brew coffee. Yeah, and I learned. I I'm in the process of uh, I'm buying some. Uh, uh, um, big jars that you use to make um, sprouts with and you I'm soaking coffee beans in there and then you're making my own cold brew coffee because they are very expensive now to buy it's one cup makes uh, 40 one one little container I think is like eight ounces makes 40 cups of coffee and and the the, the cold brew coffee will and this is and, and it's just like the same thing with the garlic it does kill okay so if you spray it on ants you spray it on whatever bugs uh, it will kill them, but at the same time, you know, it, like it's uh, also very good for snail control. But what, what works really good for snail control is the coffee grounds. When you make coffee, don't throw the coffee grounds away. Put it in your garden. It will control the snails. It will stop the snails from laying their eggs. Have you ever seen a snail on coffee? You do not want to see it. It's not a nice. You have this little snail moving along. It's a lovely day. Oh yeah, it's a beautiful day. It run and count his coffee, but like actually <laughs> speaking of, of putting stuff down, somebody in the chat was mentioning earlier that uh, wood ash that the, the ants will go around a pile of wood ash, it won't go over top of it. Right, right. I I, I know about that, but the problem with putting it a wood ash on the on, in the soil is that it really damages the soil in the long run. Uh, so you don't really want to be putting that down on a regular basis. That, that's what that's the only thing I would say about wood ash. Anything because you know garden food grade or garden grade diatomaceous earth works really really good too, because it's a powder you know and they, and they get it on yep. them. Uh, uh, but uh, if the wind comes along and it gets it in your eyes, not good. Uh, yeah. So I learned I've learned to uh, to use things that are in a liquid form because then you can apply it directly and the wind doesn't kill it. You have more control of using it. So the and do you find that it, it actually lasts longer because it's it's sprayed on as an aerosol onto the plant itself, uh, that it would last longer than something like diatomaceous earth that would would be gone. Well, diatomaceous earth, it, it, it's okay. I actually I I actually learned how to use it in a different way. But what I do is I would take a a cup of diatomaceous earth and put it into three gallons of water and, and make a, a tea out of it. And then uh, uh, once you spray it, it dries and leaves a thin coating of the diatomaceous earth on. So I learned how to spray plants underneath and on top of it with that. And also make, I would think, get some diatomaceous earth, a little bit of water, stir it, make a paste, and make a paint out of it and paint it around. Orange oil, is, it's another one because orange, uh, the L-lanoline is toxic to many yeah. insects. And you can make your own. We get some citrus and make some citrus juice out of it. It's not so concentrated. But they have one. They have a product called Orange TKO. TKO. Yeah. Yep. And it's made from oranges. It's actually from Canada. It's in Canada. I know. We, we. I actually. We. We buy it on a regular basis. 
Right. So you learn how to use a little bit of that to make a spray. Uh, you can use that around the house, inside the house. Uh, and that's really very, very good. Uh, one issue with that is if you have a cat, it's toxic to cats. I learned that. Ah, the hard way. Lily's going to want to jump on that idea because we have two cats. <laughs> she's gonna want to jump on. Wait, she doesn't like cats. No, oh, no, 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 no. She loves her cats. She's gonna be grabbing that, and it's gonna go out the door. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it really did damage to one of my cats. It damaged the liver. And I talked to the company. I said you should say do not use it if you have a cat because this is a concentrate. They they have another product called Orange Guard, which is very not so such a concentrate. It won't hurt your your cats. Mainly, it's made for oranges, right? You can use it's called Orange Guard. You can mm -hmm. learn to use that. But the Orange TKO is it's concentrated. It's just like in the in the in the in, the, in, in my slide here, you see those little essential oils. Those are concentrates. So mm -hmm. I don't really want to tell people use essential oils because they don't understand how to use the concentrate. One drop in a gallon of water is all you need in essential oils. Understand, right? One drop in a gallon of water is all you need to use. So people are like dumping it in there and then you're using it. And if, and it's really very, very bad uh, for you, for your, horm your hormones, for your body. It's very bad for the soil, very bad for other animals. So I don't even recommend it anymore because people just don't know how to use a little bit. I, I, like uh, Leighton, you say. Uh, don't I'm, be a moron. Right, right. Don't be a yeah. moron. You, you have to use a lot less. And you, but so... Citrus is another really good one that you can use. There are, lot, there are lots of things you can use to control ants. And uh, the idea is you make your own safe spray. And, and here's some tips for the outside. So here's a secret. To how, this is how I control ants for my customers. I spray my worm juice on them, my, my, my microbial tea on the, uh, on the property. I spray around the outside of the house. I spray the whole property. It's one of the things I do. I spray the whole property anyway. But I've learned that, that it does control the ant population, it will control a variety of other creatures that normally should be controlled in the soil. Because mm -hmm. remember, you have long-term solutions and short-term solutions. Long-term solution is, yeah, work on the soil. It's going to take you a while to get that back in shape. You can't do something and the next day the soil is back to health. It doesn't work no. that way. And many places I tell people, so let's say you've been here 30 years doing all this stuff to the soil. You want me to do what to your soil in, in 30 days? You're lucky if in a year the soil starts to respond because not only do do, do the people them, do the people themselves they have to change their habits. This one lady says, I, first thing I asked is, do you have a pest control company?" She says, "Yes, I mean it's here every every week, every month." And I said, "Okay." And then she says, "Oh, by the way, my daughter has cancer. My dog has cancer. My <laughs> I have a little bit of cancer." And I love butterflies. And I go, I'm thinking to myself, you got to be crazy, lady. <laughs> the, the, stuff, the stuff that they're using, I, I, I can say, because I, I don't care if they sue me, it's called Timbor. Timbor is supposed to be made for termite control, subterranean termite. They're small, only supposed to be injected into the soil to kill the termite, which kills everything else, too. So what yeah. they do now is they say, well, because it kills everything, we're going to go and spray it around your property, around your house. It'll, it'll keep the ants away. But unfortunately, you're getting it, the dog's getting it, the birds are getting it, the bees are getting it, the, the, the butterflies are getting it. I mean, when I found she was doing that, I said, I, I, I quit. I'm not going to come here anymore. I wouldn't use cayenne pepper because uh, it's uh, it uh, it doesn't – you do more damage than good. Uh, when you It does work, but if the winds come and blow, you're going to get it on your eyes. You're going to get, I used to use cayenne pepper to control gophers, put it in their gopher tunnel. And one day a gopher came out with cayenne pepper all over his face. I said, no, I'm not in the torture business. And you can, you can buy liquid. Uh, you can get cayenne pepper and make a liquid out of it. But when it dries, you're still going to have the same problem. So you have to be real careful with that. That's one reason why I don't recommend it because I know people will tend to overuse it. Next thing you know, they got cayenne pepper in their eyes. It's like with diatomaceous earth. Don't really want to use it unless you know how to use it because it's, it could definitely be, if you get that in your eyes, you're done. Mm -hmm. Literally you're done. But so the easiest, simplest way is to start, you know, learn how, you know, if you have compost, make compost tea. Now, if you, we, we need to, I don't know if I have set schedule here on the proper way to make compost, but if you make it, make it properly, no problem, John. What is that? You got, you, what is that your mask out there? Let me see that. Is that your mask? What is that? 
Is that is that a oh I, I know what that is. You put quarter for music, it's a jukebox, right? I think so. Is that what it is? Is it a jukebox? Why you got a jukebox there, John? Tell me what's going on with you and the jukebox, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's a musician, he loves music. Oh, you're a musician. Cool, cool. I hope you listen to some of my music, man. I'm going nuts with music these days. <clears throat> so listen. So for our site. As I said before, the biology is it. So it means you have to be spraying the biology on the old, old, oh, Grateful Dead, steal your face. Oh, cool. I, I have one of my uh, one of my customers is one of the, is a drummer for Grateful Dead. Really, really cool, uh, cool people. And I I have been lately been listening to Grateful Dead all the time now, driving in the truck. It's really, really I've I've, I've and have so many songs you don't never hear all of them you know and a lot of them are really really cool i'm enjoying it so people i pull up and they hear me and they turn over and go oh what is that a grateful dead <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you've never heard of grateful dead oh my god you know anyway and, and when you uh, when you're making a microbial tea you have to have the microbes in the tea a lot of people make compost there's no co microbes in the compost so it's not going to yeah. really work you you be spraying compost. You're spraying something, <laughs> but you're not spraying the microbes. That's why it's important yeah. to learn how to make compost. What I consider to be properly, uh, you know, that means you have to learn how to use animal manures. That's the whole key to making compost. I love it. And the store says no animal manure in their compost. I'm going well. That's not compost. It's a soil amendment, but it's not compost. And people say I bought this, and why isn't it working? Well. Uh, I, you know, remember, remember we had the person from Alluvial Labs? Yeah. Send that off to the lab and t have him tell you what microbes are in. He'll say, well, uh, no, you're kidding me, right? Because it's got nutrients because you, you, they put all the different things in there, but no microbes, yeah. nothing that's alive. So you're not going to – so the, the the trick is, to, I tell people, the good guys and the bad guys don't live in the same place, mm -hmm. right? So the ants are not bad, but the ants, if you spray – if you spray around the property, if you spray, I spray around the house, you get, give it extra coating so it soaks the soil. The ants get it on them. The microbes affect their natural bacteria that the ants have. They take that back to the colony, it wipes out their colonies. The microbes wipe out the ant colonies because that's the way they normally control any, any, any pest in the soil. We were, we we're used to ants because ants is probably the number one thing people are dealing with. But anything that's, that's are, including termites, anything that grows in the soil, not anything because it won't hurt earthworms. Earthworms can go through them all the time, you know. But so usually the different types of bugs are all controlled by the microbes. So when you make micro tea or make compost tea, make sure that it's alive. And if you don't know it is, then you, you, you can go to, you can go on uh, Google and Google uh, microbes for sale. You can find tons and tons of them, which I'm going to have to do a, a micro show because uh, people want to know uh, where I get a lot of my stuff, right? I get tons and tons of stuff, and I, I, I don't know. I don't have the ability to look at them under a microscope and see what's going on. All I do is I know I spray something, and if that didn't do any good, I spray. Oh, look at that. Because you get, you get, a lot of times you get instant results. Things happen right away if, the, if it's alive with micro. Plus, your nose tells you. So one so way, what, what's your nose telling you that it smells good or it smells bad? It smells what? Well, it smells. If if it starts to, if you, if you make if I make my compost tea, my tea was for spraying and I put it in a container and leave it there for a few days and I smell it, I go phew. But if there's yeah. no comp, no microbes at all in there, I can leave it there forever and there's no smell whatsoever coming out. There's nothing happening. Nothing okay, happening I see what you're saying. Is that's how you're you're testing that you know that there's life in there? Because chemical reaction is happening, the biology is working it and right. creating the, those smells. Okay. Right, right. When I when I do when I fill my hundred gallon tank up with uh, distilled water and I make my micro my my tea in there, why? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> and I make my tea in there. I bubble it. If I yeah. leave it overnight, the next day you can definitely smell it. Leave yeah. it for two days. People come up and something died here. What's going on, right? And when I clean up my sprayer, I have to clean up the holes because there's liquid in the holes. And if it's just mm -hmm. sitting on the sun, gets super hot, they all just decompose, they all die, and it stinks like crazy. So I know there's living microbes in there. I don't know what type they are. All I need to know is they work. And so that's 
one of the things you could, the easiest thing to do, let me see if I, if I did it over here. Okay, so um, see this, we have the keep your plants healthy is very important. And, and, and so, as I said before, the uh, healthy plants are not attacked. Ants will not climb up and down the healthy plant. Again, the only way you can keep your plants healthy is what? Keep the soil healthy. That's it's all the about way the way. Keep them. It's the only way you can keep the, the plants healthy. It's like, I said use compost. I should say use live compost. And people, yeah. people, people can say, what do you mean live compost? Well, there's, there's microbes in there. Things are living in the in your compost. And you mm -hmm. can send it off to this lab, for example, which you're going to put in there because you did you get an affiliation thing with the lab company, right? Yeah, so, there's uh, 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 links for a discount for a, a lot of different stuff, actually, um, is in the description, guys. Great. Um, Great. And our Patreon. We finally got a Patreon link as well. Uh, if you guys want to help support the channel and the R&D grow, please uh, help us out. That's what it's all. That's what it's all about. I've been using Patreon for a long, long time, but I do it. Uh, uh, I I run a game. <laughs> I, I run a planet, and I'm known as Captain Crazy. And then uh, Patreon, they they pay me so they can come to my planet and uh, do stuff. <laughs> you know, we build ships and we travel the universe and fight alien beings and do all kinds of stuff. And you know. Yes, biologically, biologically complete, complete compost. compost. That's the way to say it. Biologic. I have to remember that. Biologically complete. You, compost. you want to write it down? Yeah, yeah, it yeah, down. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I can't write. Biologically that. complete compost. Yeah, that's the way that that, and that's what you need because if you have, if it's, if, if your compost is not biologically light, you're missing out on the whole. You're missing the bus. You're missing the whole thing. And you're then, missing course, the you're reasons why you're doing compost in the first place. Right, and then you're going to have problems. So, they, if, for example, use trace minerals. If you use the, if you make that, put the trace minerals in their compost. Uh, it, normally, you know, normally uh, there's uh, there's, uh, and I know who, you know who I'm talking about, but normally your trace minerals are already in the soil. Mm -hmm. That's a good chance of lots of trace minerals in the soil. All we have to do is bring the biology back. Uh, unfortunately, yep. Mother Nature is not recycling as well as she's used to so the trace mill deficiency is going to happen more and more of that's going to happen same thing with our food we don't you know if you don't if it isn't growing in but in, in, in the biology uh, they won't have the trace minerals and we won't eat it and then we're, we're not going to have the trace mill we're going to have the problem yeah so the for the outside is to learn how to make biologically biologically um active yeah. Complete biologically. Biologically complete. complete. I have to say this over and over again. Biologically complete compost, right? So you have to BCC. Learn to, yeah, you have to learn how to do that because, and then your fertilizers will work. Organic fertilizers will work. Organic fertilizers do not work if there's no biology in the soil. Mm -hmm. that, that's the whole key to make them make them work. You know, so you, Andy, have you ever looked at taking your compost? Um, and putting it in your worm bin and having them take it to the next level because then you've got, you know, this next level of compost. Of course. Of course. So one of the layers that I put in there is my compost. In your right? worm bin. And then once a year, I got to clean everything out because everything's uh, there's this compost in there that's so biologically rich and I have to start over again. And I take, I take that and I use that to make the tea with. And I use that as as a um, uh, what do they call it when you um, when you uh, uh, when you're making yogurt you have a culture, culture mother right. plant right you, you know so it's a starter like the biodynamic starter you take I take a little bit of that worm compost put it in the center of my compost pile and that's that's what I and then I build my compost from there okay. and I know then I know that the biology is going to be in there and I also I love making a tea out of that because it, the worms eat the compost. The worms will go through this compost oh, process yeah. really, yep. really well. They really, they will. I've learned how to give them a little bit of manure. You know, I can buy some steer manure. Steer manure is very important. It's very hard to get on the show. You know, a place that has a cow. So I go out and buy the steer manure. See, right up here, brother, I got cattle all around me. There's, there's cattle shit everywhere up here. And I, re I recently discovered a really cool company that that's what they do. They got cattle everywhere, and they make this excellent compost from the cow. You can buy it almost yeah. any place. It's sold all over across the United States. I'm going to have to um, 
figure out a way to do an affiliation thing with them. Because my problem is my gardeners, the people, uh, people's properties, they don't make compost. The gardeners don't make, they go to the store and buy crap and they, and they put it on, uh, on, on their property. And they say, and then, and then I'm telling them, well, this isn't any good. Yes, it is. It says compost right there. And you look at it and what it is, it's just shredded stuff. It's just shredded things. You know, they, they yeah. shred everything and that's their compost. And I'm going, well, at least I can inoculate them. So what I do is I spray my, my microbes on them. Well, uh, there are a bunch of different companies. And what I'm going to have to do is to, um, uh, I don't know them. Uh, uh, I just found there's one particular one by heart which sells the compost. It's really, really good because they, they do it. And uh, I have to uh, uh, look them up again and write it down. But what you, we, what you guys can do is you can always uh, go up to the website and use the inquiry form and say, hey, I, I, saw, I saw your show. Give me the name of that company. And I'm more, you should be doing that anyway. You should be getting the news there because the news there will go over it. And and, and uh, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I will uh, provide, I want to provide you sources where you can buy some really good stuff. I, I have a really good place to get rock dust, for example. We should do a show on rock dust, which I yeah. don't think, I, I don't think we'll have a schedule. Thanks, here. Do we have one scheduled here for coming up uh, for rock dust? Let me see. I don't know. You yeah, yeah, I'm mean, looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. The next yeah, one's yeah. one safe go for control. We have tree care, pest free tree, uh, tree diseases and tree pests. We will be talking about the refractometer. We're talking about from seed to plate. Uh, I even cover flea free living. And you know? so so I'm, I'm putting down rock dust as, as, as another one in the compost. And I will provide okay. you sources for it. I have. Uh, 14 different places I buy rock dust from, okay? Just yeah. like you get Well, I know it. that for, for worms, uh, I know Wormies um, is really good. They're up in, in uh, uh, by Lake Michigan. I don't even think they ship in the winter, though, because, you know, they don't want the, the – it's really alive. They don't want it to freeze. I have a really good source for worms, and I get the um, African red wigglers. The, Okay, red wigglers or African night crawlers. Or... I think they're African night crawlers, right? And the other one's European red wigglers, right? There are two different varieties. Yeah, I like the yeah. African. I like the African night crawlers because they're very, very hardy. Uh, they they very big and they produce a massive amounts of the leche. Yeah, <laughs> which is what you want. And then uh, and you all know that I mentioned C ninety before S C A ninety, S C A, and you can get to their site by S C A ninety dot com. And that's 90 trace minerals that you yeah. can use. Uh, so let me see what, uh, what I have a little bit more to go here. Let me see what this one is next. Well, here's the outside. So you start your own worm farm. I'm going to go over the, again, I'm going to do, uh, and then, so, so we have like a list of 10 shows that we're doing. Yeah. After that, we're going to do worm farms, rock dust, compost, and uh, we're going to talk. Uh, so anything that, that we want to cover, Now's a good time. Then I'll put it in as part of the show. But once you start your own worm farm, it's probably the best thing you could do, whether you're growing pot or a lawn or fruit trees, whatever. You learn how to feed the worms, and the worms will provide you with the most amazing, amazing microbes you've ever, ever gotten. I know that Layton has his own source of microbes. He's very cool. I think he uses a fish. Fish brew. Yeah. It's true, right? And and so there are lots of different ways to get the microbes. This is the way I've learned mm -hmm. how to how to get the microbes because I I have a little a little little worm bin in my garage. I have one yeah. at, at Michelle's place, which is basically a big cattle trough. But it's a tiny little worm bin. It produces maybe uh, a cup, uh, or two or three or four cups. But I, I I have a machine that I can. It's a beer making machine that I put it in with clean water. 15 gallons of steel water, one cup of my worm juice, come back the next day, bingo. I have 15 gallons of, of worm juice, which yeah. is really, really, really cool. And that is the number one thing I've learned to control ants with, spraying them with the, with the worm juice. I know the microbes are there. If, if I was living in a place where I was making compost, I would definitely be making the compost and spraying them with the compost. <clears throat> one of the things that I think is really curious a lady called me up and says, I'm making, I'm going to visit it. She says, I have a compost file, but I can't do anything because it's full of ants. I said, lady, you don't have a compost file. So, you know, if, if the ants are moving into your compost file, what does that tell you, Ken? 
then your compost pile is dead and you're really in trouble. But we do have a couple of questions. Okay, go uh, for it. Do you know anything about how to get rid of mice indoor <laughs> greenhouse everywhere? Would the garlic well, work for that? Well, it, it, you don't want to be using garlic indoors. Uh, I've learned, well, I hate to tell you this, but a cat will work, do wonders. One cat will get rid of the mice like crazy. Okay, that's what I, I've always had a cat that will bring me ahead of a mouse. You want this? I don't know. Thank you. I, I already ate, you know. <clears throat> but you, remember, I talked a little bit about. A smell so they go by sense of smell so you want to key into that so there are lots of different things you can spray inside around that would literally drive them away so if you're if you have a barn you learn to spray the cold brew coffee caffeine is very bad for these guys very very bad they can't handle it. vanilla is toxic to them so I get vanilla coffee so what I do is I uh, there's two things I do. One is you get vanilla beans. You get the beans, the coffee beans, and you sprinkle them around the areas you're having a problem with. If they're under the wood or they're in the barn or around the, uh, the outside of the house, you sprinkle the beans. The beans will last you for a friggin' months, especially if they get wet on a regular basis because they will produce this. If you smell it, they smell it too. Yeah. Chickens don't like my cedar. I don't know why, but they, they, should, they should attack them. Maybe because they, they steal their food. This is probably the, the now I do have uh, I want to bring up perpetuals uh, statement here uh, SEA 90 is us only product um, haven't it yeah is there an alternative that you can suggest for the the Europeans um, so you're saying you can't order it from if you're in Europe you, that's what uh, what he's saying yeah okay I didn't I didn't know that because I know that they, they haven't pretty much uh, but if you go to uh, you, c90.com, you can order it from and, and, and be in Europe. I, I, I would give that a try. Go to sea90.com and order it from them. Yeah, you Another might person. be able to because isn't it made in Salt Lake City or something like that? I, I Where does C90 come from? Uh, it's uh, Canada. Canada? It comes Canada. from up here? I can't buy it up here worth a shit. Well, they, it comes they, from here? Is, is somewhere in, 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 in not in the United States. It's shipped to the United States. It's someplace, I think maybe it's Africa, someplace. It's an ancient seabed. Yeah. But yeah. C90.com is their main distributor, and they'll tell you places that you can get from in Europe. Get it in Europe. But here's okay. the thing. Perpetual saying found and... and uh, yeah, uh, John saying I get C90 in Australia, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you, you should be able to get it anywhere because it's not a toxic, it's not regulated, so that you can't order it. They may not be available there, but you can you can buy it from one place and have it shipped to you. It should not that should not be a problem. You want to start? I, I would go to C90.com, and you can even say I I live here. Where's the closest place I can order from? Because that way save you on some shipping. But they have a, a map that shows you where everywhere that the distributors are at. So that's what I would do. Or yeah. But but remember, yeah. it's just it's it's, it's sea salt. The sea of so, Cortez is what. Uh, there you go. Where's at. where's that at? Where's Sea of Cortez? Is that Mexico? I would think. Sea of Saint Cortez. Cortez. I don't know. Whoa, diggy dang. I, I don't know, but it's sea salt. So you can get you can use any type of salt that's minerally rich. Yeah, they have a wide variety of salts from all over the place. You just have to see how it's, you don't want to buy anything that's made. You want salt as mined, mined salt, right? I like okay, the C90 because yeah. uh, they specifically uh, clean it up, you know, make it easier for people to use. It's already in a nice little crystallized form. <clears throat> you can add it to water, the salts. You can either sprinkle it on, you can also sprinkle it on the, on the ground. Uh, but if you, if you, uh, so you the cold brew coffee spray that all over, all over the place outside your mises are going to be gone. Yeah, right. The, they cannot handle the uh, getting caffeine in them. That's one tool. Garlic works really well outside too, as well. So don't use it in the house, but you'll find that 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 will that will also control the the, the mise for you. Again, the easiest have a, a female mouse which will go out there and catch everything. 
you know, if you can't, if you can do that, that would be your best alternative to have a female mouth. Oh, we have another few minutes. Hang on. Okay, so I, 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 learn, learn, learn about biological controls. There are lots of ways to control ants by sticking up, uh, other biology onto them, okay? And then you have to really learn why you really have an ant problem in the first place, which basically yeah. is the soil, right? Once you get that together and you learn uh, how to control the ants, you really want to control the ants. You'd never be completely free of ants. If, uh, if you are, then that's something wrong. The, the trick is to dance with them, to so learn how to get the ants to see that. <laughs> no, uh -huh. ants mean soil is toxic for them and toxic for you. Remember, the living soil is the most important. That's the key right there, living soil. And it's yeah. most important for the health of the soil, for the health of everybody. Okay? All life depends on I, I just got carried away and did all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so we're done, guys. I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, please visit my website. And if you haven't gotten the newsletter yet, or visit my uh, YouTube channel. You guys, you know about YouTube because we I watch uh, the, it's the Barazzi all the time. But uh, on my on my channel, it would also be good to support it too. Send me a million dollars if you guys are wealthy. Uh, I, I'll take it yeah, in any me way. Me too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll take it any way, any way <laughs> I can get it. And I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful to be here. And we're going to be doing uh, covering more stuff. If anything you want me to cover, you should you should pass it on to Ken. Ken will pass it on to me. I already have uh, four things, three things I'm going to be covering. Uh, rock dust. I'm going to be talking about um, um, worm farming and compost. We'll go over again how, how I would make compost to make it really, really super alive because that's the key mm -hmm. to everything, right? So, yeah. guys, well, living soil is, you know, the biology. Living us is the biology inside of us. Living plants is, you know, it's all about the biology. So, that's guys, right. yeah, we're at the end. Um, we have Tim Hanneran on, or, yeah, Tim Hanneran. On with the ladies again tomorrow. You guys ask for him to come back. He's coming back tomorrow. Um, and then the next R&D Grow, I'm thinking Friday or Saturday, but don't hold me to that. We'll see how things go. Um, almost done all my wiring and, and clean up now. So we're almost ready to be popping some seeds. Uh, so anyway, guys, love you all. And uh, Andy, say bye. Bye. See you guys later.